What's up everybody? For today's video, I'm going to answer a question that I recently got, which was how do I stack a tracked sky and then combine it with a foreground image? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And let me just go over the images we have here. So this was at Assateague Island in Maryland. And I use a star tracker for these five images right here that are all around 60 second exposures at f4, 24 millimeters, and ISO 2500. Now that's not terribly high, but we still have some noise in there. And by stacking these five images, it should clean it up nicely, which allows me to process this Milky Way a little heavier and get away with some stuff because. Sometimes when you have a single image of the Milky Way and you go to process it, you start to add noise back into it. And that's what we're trying to avoid. But by stacking it, it makes it a lot cleaner. So it gives me a little bit more room to work with so I could uh, kind of enhance it a lot more. Next up, we have the foreground, which is the naturalist shack at Old Ferry's Landing in Assateague Island. And this is just a really cool foreground feature. And what I did here is took a really long exposure over two minutes or at 146 seconds. It was at f5, 14 millimeters, and ISO 1250. And this allows me to get a cleaner foreground image. And I took four of these shots. So we're going to be combining all four of those and stack them in Photoshop and then combined it with our stacked sky. Now I have another photo here. And this is at a higher ISO of 6400, f3.5 at 13 seconds. And the reason I took this photo is because the wind was not blowing that night. So I had nice still water right here in the bay. And I'm going to use the star reflections here and bring them back into the overall photo because unfortunately the long exposures were giving me star trails in the water. So I wanted to do a short exposure for the stars and the water. And before I get into editing, let me just show you a comparison between a lower ISO, really long exposure versus a shorter exposure at a higher ISO. So let's zoom in here at three to one. You can just see the detail that I was able to retain and obviously less noise, that's a given due to the ISO, but yeah, it's just, so much cleaner off the bat which makes life a little easier when we go to blend things together all right so i'm going to close that out now what i want to do with this image right here is make the water a little smoother and less noisy since it's just a single image at a high ISO. So I'm going to reduce the contrast and zoom in here. And we're going to raise the noise reduction really high. And it's okay to raise the noise reduction really high because we're just focused on the water and we want smooth water with some star reflection in it. So that looks pretty good. Let's jump over to these photos. Just gonna reduce the contrast a little bit. And I'm not gonna do anything else for now. I kind of want to combine everything before I start editing the color and uh, the brightness because I don't want to deviate too far off from this particular image. So um, we'll just leave everything as is. Now the next thing we're going to do is export these images so we can stack them in Starry Landscape Stacker or whatever program you have that will stack a night sky. So go to File, Export, and then export them as a TIFF file. That way you have a lot more control over your images after you stack them in Starry Landscape Stacker. I already exported my images before to save some time, so I'm just going to go and open those up. So if you get a message like this when you open up your images in Starry Landscape Stacker, just hit work with current images. 
We really don't need to do this step, just do find sky. Now just paint away anything that isn't landscape. Um, I have a little bit of the tree line right here, so I'm just gonna leave that out of the image and do a line and composite. And that looks pretty good. It's cleaner than a single image. So we're gonna save this out. And I'm gonna bring my new image into Lightroom. Okay, so here's my new stacked tracked image and let me just compare it for you guys okay so on the left we have our stacked tracked images and on the right is just a single tracked image and let me zoom out a little bit so obviously you can see the difference between a stacked tracked image versus a single tracked image and i was able to reduce a lot of the noise that we we're getting so uh, this will give us a better Milky Way to work with. So now what we're gonna do is take the stack tracked images and combine them with our foreground. So we go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop once you selected your images. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and we have all the photos in one layer. Now I have the short exposure on top and I'm gonna hide that layer. And I want to focus on the four long exposures. So I'm going to select those and go right click, convert to smart object. Next, we're going to go to layer, smart objects, stack mode, mean. Now, this is just going to average those images together, creating a cleaner image. Let's just zoom in here. And you could see that this thing is really clean. We have a couple hot pixels, but those are easy to get rid of. We just got to clone those out. And it made the stars trail a little bit more. You could see them trailing in the water here. So what we want to do is replace this water with the single exposure right here. So the first thing I want to do is rasterize the smart object. Next, we can see that the tripod uh, must have got moved a little bit because the images don't perfectly align up. So I'm gonna select both the images and go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. Now sometimes this works pretty well and sometimes it doesn't, but uh, we'll see how it does. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna move my long exposure layer to the top and create a layer mask by hitting the layer mask button. Make sure you have black selected and grab a brush. And we want to make sure it's at 0% hardness and the opacity is around, let's start with 60%. And just increase the size of my brush. And I'm gonna start painting the bay area and bring back the stars that I want reflecting on the water surface. And that looks pretty good. Now if you make a mistake, just switch it to white and you could undo that part of that mask. And if you wanna see where your mask is, hit the backslash button and that will reveal what you're painting. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I wanna merge these two layers together. So right click and go to merge down. And now we have our foreground and our sky layer. And I like to work from copies in case I make a mistake. So select both those layers and create a copy. And I also want to expand the workspace to make it a little easier. So I'm gonna to go to image, canvas size, and I'll make the height 20 inches. And 
I'm just going to move my foreground down a little bit. And go to Edit, Free Transform. I'm going to lower the opacity of the foreground. And now I can select the sky layer and put that into position. Just make sure the horizon is below the horizon of the foreground. We'll go to Edit, Free Transform. And that looks pretty good. I can bring the opacity back up for the foreground and create a layer mask. Now select your brush and make the hardness 100% and the opacity 100% and start painting away the sky area. And we want to get as close as possible to the foreground so that makes life a little easier when we go to use Refine Mask. So just change your brush size. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get as close as possible. Okay, so that should be close enough. Now I want to right click my mask layer and go to Select a Mask. And just start painting along the edge. I hold down the space bar to move along the picture when I'm zoomed in. Let's zoom in a little bit more. It actually did a pretty decent job right off the bat. You could see the settings I'm using, use those as a guide to get you started. I have a radius of one pixel, smooth is at one, feather, I have 0.2 pixels contrast. I typically keep between 10 and 20 percent and then the shift edge I usually have it in negative usually negative um, 1 all the way up to like negative 10. It varies slightly depending on the foreground and this did a pretty good job so I'm going to leave it like that. Now we have a nice blended sky and foreground and I'm going to go to the sky layer and make a copy. And now I'll do some processing, whether I do it here or in Lightroom. And uh, I try to always work from copies. That way, if I do anything destructive, I always have the original that I could go back to in case I decide to change something in the future. But um, for this tutorial, I'll just do something really basic that I'd like to do, which is just take my dodge tool and just dodge the highlights. I'll pass over this a couple times and then switch it to burn and I'll burn the shadows and just do a couple passes over the core of the Milky Way and then I'll just do a bigger one over the sky as well just to darken that up you could also do an S curve or some other editing techniques as well, which I talk about in other videos. So go check those out because I'm not going to get into it too much on this particular video. I mostly just want to show you guys how I stacked my tracked sky and then how I blended it with a foreground. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to leave links in the description below of other programs that you could use that will stack your tracked skies. So check that out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. So I hope this helps you guys out. Take it easy and thank you for watching.